Hi, everyone. It's October. Time for another community reading. So I've already pulled the cards. Um, I'm going to read from Lynn Andrews' Power Deck. Uh, Carolyn Mace Archetype Cards. The Animal Spirits. And finally, the Goddess of Knowledge cards. I think those give a nice variety. And um, I pulled the cards already, so we don't have to wait. And um, it seems like the theme is regeneration, renewal. So that's good. So all new projects, things that you're going to be doing uh, are all looking good. So we're going to start with, uh, I pulled seven cards from each deck. And the first position is the near past. And what I've got are, is martyr. That's the archetype. But the light attribute is learning to transcend nature uh, of service to oneself or cause. So it's transmuting it so that you are doing service in the highest way, letting go of the egoic attachment to that. And you're, you're nurturing, nurturing. The hands are holding you. The water is helping you heal. And it says, we are the only ones who can heal ourselves, sometimes with assistance, sometimes without. Our energy or chakra systems correspond to the energy flow from the earth. If you feel, listen and feel, the earth will heal you as you heal her. With the nurturing force of timeless give and take, prayer enables you to take power out of the mind and place it in the hands of the deities of the earth and sky Try to see through the mirage of social barriers that cloud the eyes of women and men all of um, the world over. Nurture your dreams. Act in your dreams as you want to act. Find the guarded kivas and sacred places where you have hidden your heart and nature, and nurture, rather, your spirit. Okay, that was beautiful. And then... We have uh, the power animal polar bear. There's the polar bear. And it says, the Inuit people, uh, I should just say symbology of the polar bear is power, wisdom, and peace. So the Inuit people consider the polar bear, which they call Nanook, to be powerful and wise. The legend of cute, I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce this, cute. Ki, 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 uh, don't write me, I know it's, I'm not pronouncing it right, describes a 10-legged polar bear living on the Arctic ice pack who, re, who renounced the violence of his four-legged relatives and attempted to create a community based on peace and love. In the painting entitled Playing with the North Wind, the bear dances and cavorts with the wind, a symbol of spiritual, spiritual energy. Um, so it looks like we're talking about peace, nurturing, and giving of yourself in a way that you do not diminish who you are. Uh, not a, not the martyr, but the person who will give after they've taken care of themselves. So this is what I'm getting with, with this. And the final card is Sedna, the goddess Sedna. And uh, Sedna uh, it was once a beautiful Eskimo woman who lived with her father. And She's a reminder of the nourishing gifts that are to be found in the deep, dark, and cold places that we most fear. 
because she sent food to hunters, shamans who descend to visit her. And so I think, again, this talks about no matter where you're at, um, how you're feeling, even in the darkest places, there's nurturing to be had. That shadow self, that shadow work, um, give yourself that time to be able to allow that healing to take place so that you can, oops, this is upside down, so you can give of yourself in a in a place of power, give from yourself to others. Okay, that was the near past. And this is the current energy, which is pretty interesting. Detective. And this is great powers of observation and intuition. Desire to seek out the truth, as many of us are right now, right? With everything going on, we have a desire to seek out the truth. And we have a power card. You can see the boat. And this power card is about innocence. A boat can represent your voyage toward the islands of higher consciousness. That boat is made from your treasured innocence. We all are, we are all born with wild and innoc innocence like a blue heron. To live in civilization, at a very young age, we become like sheep trying to fit in with the crowd. To maintain your receptive innocence is to listen to your own inner voice. Know that the powers of the universe are within you. And we have next heron, the bird a heron, so it's a power animal. Symbology is life, feminine energy, renewal. The heron is a bird of the water and thus associated with the feminine energies and regeneration. In Egypt, the heron was the first transformer of the human soul after death because it was seen in flight over the fields when the Nile began to flood. It was associated with fertility and renewal of life in the Roman epic, the heron is, again, a symbol of renewal and is depicted rising from the ashes of the burned city of Ardea. Probably another mispronunciation. But, and finally, the goddess card, Psyche. And from Psyche, we learn uh, a rich reminder of our imperative to grow. She reminds us that the process takes us into the dark places as well as light, just as the butterfly emerges from the dark chrysalis into the light. So it seems that we have some themes of the dark times we're going through, but reminding us of the light. So be a detective of truth. You're gonna be looking at everything. Don't take things just at face value. Ferret out the truth. Uh, remember your innocence, the innocence of trusting your inner voice. The regeneration of the heron. And again, psyche, those darker places, but the light is still there. So no matter what we're going through in October, we have all the power to help us move through it. <clears throat> and then the next set of cards are in the position of, um, what is that position? <laughs> Let's see, we did the near past, we did the present and the near future. So this is the near future, King. The light attributes are enlightened, benevolent leadership, benefited, benefiting those in your charge. So whoever you're doing work uh, with, um, whether it's you going to Starbucks and ordering something from the barista, this you're in the king role and you need to behave 
as someone who is enlightened and benevolent, no matter what you're doing at work or even at home when you're talking to your children or maybe even your husband. Um, and again, nice reminder, this is a beautiful card of humor. And um, humor, fear, and anger awaken the power with, of your will. In the juxtaposition of realities, find truth as in the prim primitive position in the wilderness of an urban setting. See how you have chosen your illusions as others have and seek to feel the laughter that holds together your daily dream. Self-importance blinds you to the joy of and the humor. Awaken the power of your will and find your joy and laughter. Awaken your sense of humor. So it kind of ties into this king card of not being, you know, a lorded over boss kind of energy, the big king, be the benevolent king, and you won't stand in your own way of your joy, of your laughter. And the next card is our power animal, the wolf. And this power animal is about creation, healing, and purification. So it, it's a healing card telling you that once you get through, you know, the feeling that once you behave in a benevolent way, even when you're in a leadership role, you will find your humor and you will share your humor and feel the humor of others. And your wolf helps you to create, heal and perfect um, your energies. And the final card is the goddess card of the high priestess. And this again is a position of near future. And the priestess, the high priestess is a reminder of the innate wisdom in each of us. She demands that we connect to the divine spark within and manifest it in the world. So that all makes perfect sense when we have, again, the king. We have bringing in our humor. Lead in a positive and beautiful way. Bring in your humor. Um, the power of your wolf with creative healing and purification and your high priestess which is about divine spark within and manifesting so there it is it's a total package for the near future that's looking really good for all of us and this is position of us who we are in october as we sit and i have mediator So mediator is a gift for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life, respect for both sides of the argument. And this beautiful card, destiny. Uh, your act of power is the key to your destiny. Like a sacred flute player enticing your truth of spirit out into the day, light of day, your own power, because you are made of power. An act of power comes from a place of passion within your deepest self, as it is an expression of your totality of who you are in the world. Try to find your act of power. Try to find your act of power is to live and live your dreams. What would you do if you could do anything? Discover what that is and then do it. Find your power is to find your destiny. So there it is. They're talking about power, how you're living with power and what that means. And, and that it's not lording it over people such as a king who isn't benevolent. So you, it's the same thing carried through. And uh, your destiny to live as a person of spirituality. And next we have the power animal of the bull. 
Interesting. <laughs> so the symbology of the bull is renewal, faith, fertility, and growth. Renewal, fertility, and growth. And it's associated with the sac sacrifice and cycle of renewal. Uh, and it restores life. So kind of a regeneration. And the changing women. It's perhaps one of the most revered deities among Native Americans in southwestern United States. Uh, among the Native Americans of the southwestern United States, she is totally benevolent figure for it is changing women who gives the people their abundance and who provides teachings that allow them to live in harmony with all things. And in the initiation ceremony of Navajo women, the initiate takes in the power of changing women so that she might learn the values of love, hospitality, and generosity, and know that she herself is a source of food and harmony. <clears throat> Excuse me. Changing women received her name because she can change at will uh, from a young woman to an old woman and then back again, very much alive today. She is tremendously nourishing goddess who teaches the wisdom of nature and cycles of birth and death. So regeneration. Oh. This is this is us in October. Mediator. Destiny. Our power animal, the bull. And changing women. So this all speaks to us to get ready to receive our destiny. And to do it with a grateful heart, with generosity, benevolence and open ourselves up to receive that because it's coming, it's here. Even if there have been dark places or can be dark places, it's all meant for our healing. So we'll come out of this stronger and more open. And the energy around us is the trickster. Transcending convention, stuffiness, and predictable behavior. So transcending that kind of behavior. Focus. That beautiful card, focus. Much of, much of what you see in life is an agreement of that something is in fact true. That something is in fact true. So you all we all agree, like this is the earth and this is how the earth looks. That's some conscious agreement we have together. Okay, to develop power, focus on one aspect of your life. This could be your career, a sport or some endeavor you have that you have passion about. Become an expert. In the process of becoming an expert, you fine tune your whole being. You collect the important parts of yourself and you begin to live the life of a warrior. Rid yourself of the attributes that are not essential in your task. Collect your energy and focus your power on wondrous and magical acts. Let the shell of your consciousness rise out of the ocean of your subconscious mind. It is just a matter of focus. So it's pulling out of the conventional stuffiness into a new way of looking at consciousness, what you feel about the earth, how you see everything going on. It's almost like a new perspective. Okay? And you have the power animal of a puma. And a puma, like the jaguar and leopard, represents powerful magic. It also symbolizes an awakening of energies and desires that can lead to healing and fulfillment. The symbology of the puma is power, desire, and healing. So it, 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 
puts you in a place of greater awareness, greater awareness. And the goddess for this position is Minerva. These are the outside influences or energies. And um, although Minerva, the go Roman goddess of war and wisdom is usually portrayed as an equivalent to the Greek goddess Athena, she was orig originally an Etruscan goddess of dawn. She's a revered goddess of wisdom for the light of dawn typifies knowledge. She guides heroes in war and in patrons of art, all arts, crafts, guilds, and medicine. Called by Ovid, the goddess of a thousand works, she was the inventor of musical instruments, numbers, and many crafts, including we weaving. The serpent and the owl were sacred, sacred to her. The serpent is an emblem of life energy and creative impulse. The owl is a symbol of death and wisdom. Plus, Minerva is the goddess of dawn and wisdom and is also the goddess of death and transformation. Minerva is an incarnation of wisdom in the form of an affirmation that we can use our knowledge and wisdom in pursuit of any goal we choose. So again, the theme of regeneration and renewal is happening for us here in October. So we're transcending the conventional stuffiness and predict predictable behavior. We're focusing, we're focusing to develop our power on one aspect of our lives to develop our consciousness. And we're calling on the Puma's strength, a power, desire, and healing to focus. And Minerva, the goddess of war and wisdom, uh, so that we can use our knowledge and wisdom in the pursuit of any goal we choose. Very powerful. Nice influences. Okay. And these are, I hate to call them obstacles, but these are some things, blocks or things that can stand in your way. And femme fatale, interesting archetype, highlights the erotic energy of the feminine. Open your heart, opens your heart when you, your dependency is rejected. So it sounds like the, that feminine part of us that is hurt. This is about that feminine part of us that needs to be healed. And this is about centering, centering that part of us that needs to be healed. Never leave your center. Count your bad points as well as your good. If you sense a weakness within yourself, explore it. You may become the source of your greatest strength as you sit like a sacred Buddha amid the pandemonium of your life. Always remember that the situation or person who has the ability to upset you most or pull you off center is your greatest teacher in the process of centering. Such negativity can become your addiction. Center yourself in your power and release your need for constant distraction from your center. Constant distraction. Whatever hurts your heart, let it go. Let it go. Center yourself. False evidence appearing real. Center yourself. Get back on point. And we have the cow as our power animal for the obstacles in our way. So the cow is about fertility, purity, and divinity. So again, we have that beautiful divinity, that, that power guiding us and helping us to take care of the centering for our hurt heart. And we have the sphinx. kind of sideways there it is the sphinx is an ancient moon goddess the goddess of birth and death well 
<laughs> we get a lot of that regeneration in this month of October. Um, it says, she's the keeper of great mystery, a symbol of strength and wisdom, royal power. She reminds us that nothing comes to creation without some destruction. And that sometimes solved to solve a mystery, we must enter the darkness. This image reminds us that there is beauty even in the heart of that which terrifies. So as we're going through a little bit of pain, remember to center. Don't get distracted. Use your use the power of the power animal cow. Fertility, purity, divinity. And our goddess, the Sphinx. There is beauty, even in the heart of what may feel something that you might be fearful about. Destruction comes and new creation begins. So, wow, there's a thing going on here. <laughs> Final outcome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. Servant, the so archetype servant. And that is about delight in serving others with a free and loving heart. With a free and loving heart. Okay, this is impeccability. There's the Buddha. Impeccability, move into that place of perfection within you, that place of truth, responsibility, competence, and intuition. Collect your discipline like a Buddha meditating in a garden of snow. Impeccability is an area of strength that continues to flame within. Maintaining your power and intent, this flame burns in your center, always indicating the level of your capabilities and your effectiveness in bringing events into being. Impeccability is tended by the aware attention to your sacred witness, that person within you who observes the target. Gather your power and with impeccability, with the intensity of a rubber band pulled and held at its breaking point. You gather intent and focus on your impeccability for the job about to be done. Oh, man, they want us to be impeccable. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, power animal, the scarab. And to, it's about regeneration again. I think there's a theme here. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> well, apparently we're going to the next level here in higher consciousness. It's like spelling it out here. So we just got to breathe through it, center ourselves, and know that it's all for our highest good. So the scarab, to the Egyptians, a scarab is a type of beetle symbolizing power that governed the celestial bodies. A great scarab was thought to roll the sun across the sky. This belief rose from the scarab's habit of shaping a piece of, well, I don't want to say it, ox dung <laughs> into a ball in which it lays its eggs. Rolling about generally from east to west, scarab-like jewels are often placed in tombs of deceased relatives to give them the power of the sun and to facilitate their resurrection. So it's really about regeneration. The scarab is about regeneration. And Venus is our goddess for our outcome, which is a beautiful goddess. Venus is the Roman goddess of grace and love, called Aphrodite by the Greeks. She evolved from early Italian goddesses, a bringer of the spring bloom and vines, a goddess of growth and beauty of nature, the goddess of desire, Venus has the irre irresistible personification of both physical and spiritual love. She gave her name, the second planet of dawn and dusk. 
as did her sister goddess Inanna, which is Sumeria, and Ishtar, which is Babylonia. The story of Venus tells how she arose naked from the sea, the source of all life, primordial creation, and a symbol of both the collective and un unconscious eternity, is a wonderful image for the emergence of the young woman in her full femininity. Venus is a striking affirmation of the love, of beauty, and pleasure of the senses risen from the sea. She is a guide through the through both stormy and calm waters of our physical desires and emotions. That's interesting for our outcome. Again, servant, delight in serving others with a loving heart. Impeccability, do everything with impeccability. Gather your intent and focus for the job at hand. Your power animal, the scarab, regeneration. Your goddess, Venus. Love and spirituality. That's pretty powerful. So I think we have all the tools in our tool chest. And I think this month, I feel like we are getting incredible downloads. I know we all went through a lot with Mercury and retrograde and other planets in retrograde, um, but it's it's gone direct or it's in that period just before it goes direct now. Um, I think it is direct. Anyway, take a deep breath. We're going to make it through October and we have a whole bunch of tools and power animals and goddesses to call on to help us. So watch this video over if you need to write down your power animals, or you know what? I will take the time to write it in the description so you don't have to go back and do that. Um, because I think it's important to be able to call on your power animals and your goddesses, no matter what, call on all of them because they're there to help you. And um, we're getting a lot of help this month. I can see that. And it is about regeneration. So nurture yourself. Nurture. Nurture yourself. And whatever you do in life, when you go out to help others, you have to nurture yourself first. Stay balanced. Do not self-sacrifice. You need to keep balanced and come from a place of power and wholeness when you go out and you help others. Uh, that's a really big message here. And I think we're good. October. You know, in the middle of October, I may do another reading with some lighter angelic energies and see what those say but this is you know kind of telling it like it is there's a little dark and light going on but we have all our tools to work through that and come out regenerated and rejuvenated uh, so stay in the light stay in balance and i'll talk to you maybe mid-month with the angel reading um so like and subscribe and uh, thank you for watching this See you. Bye.